we have a very fine uh, message today. This is in line with the uh, with the uh, theme that uh, Brother Eric and I have agreed upon, uh, and it's all about uh, holiness. And part in particular, uh, we, I will be speaking to you about sanctification. So we have a, a scripture reading here, and may I request everybody to please read. Uh, I mean, stand first. And then uh, Eric will lead us in the city. Okay. Let us read scripture reading John 17, verse 14 to 18. I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them. Because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shalt take them out of the world, but thou shalt them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy word, thy word is true. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. Lord, as your as your word is being discussed, as it, as it is being preached, Lord, behind this pulpit, open up our minds and hearts that the entrance of your word may become powerful and effective in our hearts, causing us, Lord, to obey you, to honor you, Lord, in whatever you are saying today, through your word. Oh, God, speak to our hearts today. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. amen and amen. You may be seated now. What is sanctification and what is the definition of Christian Sanctification. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. Uh, Brother Eric uh, has in part, actually many, in many parts has discussed many things are, about holiness. And it's, I'm very, very sure that sanctification is God's will for us. Okay. In the next slide, you can right away see, uh, as we can read it all together, this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you are saved from sexual immorality, that each one of you know how to control his own body in sanctification and honor. Everybody say, sanctification is the will of God. Sanctification is the will of God. God's desire for us is to be able to live in holiness. That is his very will for us. The word sanctification, do I have a... The word sanctification is related to the word saint. Okay? The word saint. The saint in uh, Greek is hagios. Uh, both words have to do with holiness. So to sanctify uh, something means to set it apart for special use. To set it apart, to separate it for for, for uh for a special use <clears throat> or for a special purpose so therefore to sanctify a person is to make him holy to be made holy is equivalent to being sanctified if you are sanctified you are made holy okay let me that uh, uh, point it clearly to you so uh, Jesus said they are not of the world just as I am not of this world and then sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth how are we going to be sanctified it is only by the working of the word of God in our hearts in our lives and so you are made to be holy holiness is only possible when you apply the word of God in your life say amen, amen. oh that's the only way no other way and then uh, <clears throat> in Christian theology sanctification is a state of separation unto God you are separated from the world you have turned to God you have separated you are separated from darkness and now you are you are brought to light that is the kind of separation that God has made for us. All believers enter into this state when they are born again. So you become sanctified the moment of your conversion. When you got born again, 
that is the initial stage okay of the sanctification that God has done into our lives in the next uh, in the next line you can say see there please satanize your hands <laughs> here and there's something wrong with this of course with the spelling what should be the right word sanitize okay would you like your hands to be satanized or sa sanitize <laughs> okay from the word sanitize yeah, it seems that the word is is very near to the word saint, right? To sanitize means what? To make your hands clean or pure. Okay. In the same way, saints are expected to live sanitized lives. Say amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, tell the person beside you, are you sanitized? Are you satanized? satanized? <laughs> or, are, or are you satanized? Satanized ka na lang sa alin, Pastor. Make sure. Okay. May ito ka na po dito na. So in the next slide, okay, let's read the, the verse all together. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Look at uh, the benefit that we gain or receive upon knowing Christ. So, here, sanctification that is mentioned in this verse is a once forever separation of believers unto God. Once and forever. Uh, uh, it takes the initial work of God, okay, before you would be made holy or pleasing before His sight, and that is at that is at the very moment of your conversion. Pag naborn again ka, doon ka lang talaga na made holy. Doon ka lang talaga na sanctified. And of course, that requires the work of God. Kilos ng Diyos yan eh. So it is a work that God performs an intricate part of our salvation and our connection with Christ. Raise your hands if you are connected to Christ. Yeah. If you are truly connected to Him, then you are a new creation. And then, at the moment of your conversion, you are made holy. Okay? I, I would call this thing as the positional uh, sanctification. Is it written there? Once for all, positional sanctification. Once forever, separation of believers unto God. So, you were... Pick, handpicked by God from darkness and then you were brought to light. You were handpicked by God from, from the kingdom of Satan and then you were brought to the kingdom of the light or kingdom of God. So it is a once forever separation of believers unto God for his own purpose, okay, for his own self, uh, for his own use. That's why you are handpicked or chosen or elected even before the foundations of the world, if you come to realize. Now, the theologians sometimes refer to this state of holiness before God as positional sanctification. By position, okay, because you got converted, you are born again. In the eyes of God, you are now made holy. You are now you have now become righteous before him, and it is the, the, the same word as that of justification. Everybody say justification. 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 Uh, just as if you never sinned. Because Christ has already forgiven your sins. And uh, every time God sees you, he doesn't see your unrighteousness, but he sees the righteousness, the righteousness of Christ within you. So you are justified. Uh, you are no longer declared, uh, you are no longer guilty, but you are now declared as righteous before God because God now sees the righteousness of Christ in you. Everybody say? Amen. Amen. You tell the person beside you, hey, you are justified, you are sanctified. <laughs> you are sanitized. <laughs> <laughs> so we are positionally holy. Actually, we are set free from every sin. 
by the blood of Christ, God has forgiven all our sins. In fact, uh, if you only uh, if you if you're going to accept it, it is truth when we say that God has already provided forgiveness for all of your sins, sins in the past, sins in the present, and even sins in the future. God already has provisions for all that. Isn't that great? Isn't that great? Okay. Uh, there is always a provision for forgiveness because you are a true believer of Christ. Now, uh, now let's look into the next slide. The second thing is progressive or experiential sanctification. The first one is uh, positional sanctification. This time it is progressive. It is uh, a holiness by experience. Every day, we must be able to live lives that are pleasing and holy before God. Amen? Amen. Okay, and it, this is the quite difficult part. But uh, you, you, uh, uh, just like what Brother Eric pointed out last week, it is not within your own capacity or ability. It is not in your power to be holy. It is all by the grace of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Okay, that's why I, I said last week, Holiness is not the way to Christ. What did I say? Holy Christ. I said, Christ it's is the way, way to holiness. To holiness. Amen? Amen? So if you want to live holy lives, you have to put your full trust in Christ who will lead you and guide you all the way so that you may attain the holiness that is in Christ Jesus. That's why the Bible also refers to sanctification as a practical experience of our separation unto God. Progressive or experiential sanctification, as it is sometimes called, is the effect of obedience to the Word of God in your life. Everybody say, it is the effect of obedience, it is the effect of, obedience. of God's Word in your life. God's word in if your you life. keep obeying the Word of God, okay, after learning it, after having it known, and having it embedded in your mind, you just obey Him. And then, God is leading you and, and guiding you in your experiential sanctification. And there are a lot of things that God commands us to do. Have we forgiven our enemies? Have we loved the unlovable? Have we given uh, anything to help out other people? Have we supported the church? Have you been kind to other people? Those are all part of your progressive or experiential, uh, experiential sanctification. So, if you obey the Word of God, it is the same as growing in the Lord. It is also the same as going towards spiritual maturity. We have to grow up. Tell the person beside you, Hey, you grow up. Same. You grow up, grow up spiritually. You cannot afford to to just be the same as you were in the past. You have to level up. You have to grow in the grace and in what? And in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to grow in holiness. You have to grow in your knowledge of, of the Bible. You have to grow in prayer. You have to grow in, in having uh, good relationships with others. You have to grow up even in, in your desire to be a blessing to anyone. You tell the person beside you, I will be a blessing to you, my brother and sister. Thank you. <laughs> because I need to grow up. So this type of sanctification is, per, is to be pursued by the believer earnestly. You have to desire for it. God started the work of making us like Christ in, in the positional sanctification that He has given us. And He is continuing His work uh, within us. Patuloy na kumikilo si Kristo sa buhay natin, matapos ay kayo pinawalang sala niya, pinatawad, pinapaging banal, at siya na may patuloy na kumikilo sa buhay mo para kayo lalong uh, makapamuhay sa kabanalan. 
not in your own strength, but by the grace that God provides. And this sanctification is affected by the application of the word. Jesus said, sanctify them by your truth. Your word is true. So how are we sanctified? When we apply the word of God in our lives. Amen? So it's not, it's not, it's not really on how much you know. It's more on whether you are applying what you have learned. That's the uh, more important part. It's not in knowing, it's in, in, it's in the application. Okay? You know, you should, you should forgive and, and yet you are not, you are not forgiving. You know that you, you should uh, be supporting the ministry and then you are not supporting. You know that you must be reading the Word of God and then you are not reading. So, we can know about a lot of things, but uh, doing what is required of us is another thing. Now, uh, it says here, progressive sanctification has in view the setting apart of believers for the purpose for which they are sent into the world. Uh, remember, Jesus said, as you send me into the world, I have sent them into the world. Can you go back to the, uh, to the first slide? There. Okay. Let's read 17 and 18. Let's go. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I also sent them into the world. Okay. So we can see here a relationship of the two verses that Jesus set himself apart for God's purpose, both for the basis and the condition of being set apart. We are sanctified and sent because Jesus was. Jesus himself was sent by the Father. And so are we. Our Lord's sanctification is the pattern of and power for our own. The sending and the sanctifying are inseparable. Let me quote that to you again. The sending and the sanctifying work of God are inseparable. You are set apart for the gospel, for Christ, to glorify Him, okay? And and uh, part of that calling is our call to be able to preach the gospel to the world, for we are also sent to it, not only Christ. So tell the person beside you, hey, you are sent by God to bring the gospel to other people. <laughs> Because your sanctifying and sending are related and they are inseparable according to that verse. Now the next slide will show you. This person said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then you don't even go to church when it rains. <laughs> I can do all things. Really? You can do everything? Uh, that's no problem with many Christians. Uh, they, they want to always quote this verse. Oh, I can do it, 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 everything. But then, uh, using the verse in a wrong context. Okay, when, but when we talk about their obedience, they lack so much about it, and they're not even willing to do what is, whatever is required. Now, uh, that should always be in our minds. If you are being sanctified by God, then we have to obey His word, for that is part of His sanctification, sanctifying work in our hearts. Now, there is the next slide. And for by one offering, He has perfected for all time those who are being saved. Okay. We'll go into that verse uh, later on, uh, because there is a third sense in which the word sanctification is used in scripture. Uh, the first one is positional sanctification. What's the second one? Progressive sanctification. The third one is permanent sanctification. Okay. Uh, this permanent sanctification is a complete or ultimate sanctification. This is the same as glorification. 
So for one, by one offering, he has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. Only by one offering. And the perfection is for one time. And that that verse has something to do with your positional uh, sanctification or holiness. And God intends for us that we might that we may uh, uh, remain in that state, always sanctified, always holy, even by experience. In the next slide, that is the complete and ultimate sanctification, also known as glorification. Why don't we read the verse down uh, down below? Let's go. And, and the very God will be sanctify you holy. And I pray in God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. That is only possible when we are already uh, in the presence of God in heaven or when the rapture would take place. That is a complete and ultimate sanctification. Uh, our whole spirit, soul, and body will be preserved uh, blameless when, when Jesus comes. Uh, I would like to uh, point out to you, Paul speaks of Christ as the hope of glory in Colossians 1.27 and links that glorious appearing of Christ to our personal glorification. Glory, uh, soon we will be receiving our glorified bodies. Would you like to receive uh, uh, your glorified body later? Would you like to receive that? Who would like to receive it now? Who would like to receive it now? Of course, nobody would want that. <laughs> Not yet. It's just, it's just the same question as I told you before. Who would like to go to heaven? Raise your hands. Like to go to heaven? You don't want? You don't like to go to heaven? Okay, would like to go to heaven now? <laughs> nobody. Not yet. Okay. Okay. It says here, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with Him in glory. Colossians 3.14 This glorified state will be our ultimate separation from sin. Everybody say, ultimate separation. Ultimate. No more sin. Because you have your glorified body. You are already in the presence of Christ, perhaps in heaven, and that is a total sanctification in every regard spirit, soul, or body. We know that when Christ appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Okay, at the next slide, you will see, only in heaven will we become perfect, but for now, we seem to be more like Jesus, our model and pattern of sanctification. It's a very good uh, picture in there. Anong ginagawa niyo dyan? It's trying to remove all the excess fats, uh, doing everything just to make him more fit or, or buff. Okay. In the same way, with regards to our spirituality, uh, in a spiritual sense, we are to be also like this. Using every kind of effort, we exert all our means that we can employ just to be able to be more spiritual, more uh, mature in the faith, and more growing in the Lord. So we try to eradicate everything that hinders, sin that besets you, sin that hinders your progress, because all this uh, should be eliminated in fact, eradicated so that we might be able to truly experience an experiential or progressive sanctification. Now, in the next slide, uh, to summarize, this is the summary. Why don't you read all together? To summarize, sanctification is a translation of the Greek word agiasmos, meaning holiness or a separation. In the past, God granted us once for all positional holiness in Christ. Now, God guides us to maturity, a practical, progressive holiness. 
In the future, God will give us a permanent ultimate holiness. These three phases of sanctification separate the believers from the penalty of sin or justification, the power of sin, maturity, and the presence of sin, which is glorification. Now, that is just the summary of the sermon tonight. And from there, we can see uh, six words that uh, seems to form an outline. If you guess it or if you got it, then it will be easier for you to be uh, reminded about the main points of what I've just preached to you. So this is talking about the three phases of sanctification and we are to separate ourselves from what? Penalty of sin, the power of sin, and the presence of sin. Positional holiness, justification. Get it? And then, Progressive holiness, sanctification. And then lastly is permanent holiness, glorification. Kuha niyo na? Anin? Wala ba dyan talaga yan? Okay, justification, uh, sanctification, and glorification. The first one is positional holiness, progressive holiness, permanent holiness. And then another outline, penalty of sin, the power of sin, and the presence of sin. Those are all provisions of God for us so that we may be able to live lives that are holy and pleasing in His sight because God has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness so that we may live lives that will glorify His name forever. Everybody say, Amen. Amen and Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise. Hallelujah. Okay, so let's all lift up our hands and, and pray to the Lord. God, we thank you for everything tonight. We have done our part, Lord, to worship you. And we're not just going through the motions. Everything we did, Lord, is part of our heartfelt worship. We listened intently to the preaching of your word. We gave our offerings. We sang songs of praise, Lord. We have read your scriptures. Uh, all these are part of worship that is that is acceptable and due to your name, Lord. Thank you also for the communion, for the Lord's Supper. And we are reminded again of your great love. And it shall forever be reminded, Lord, because you have commanded us to do so. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings that we are going to partake, even for our food tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the fellowship of the brethren. You have done so many things, God. And our thanksgiving must be endless. And you deserve all the praise, all the glory, honor, worship, and adoration. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. May God's love, may Christ's grace, and the Holy Spirit's fellowship be with us all, both now and